You've seen all across this country is um, pain and, and anguish around the injustices that continue to happen and continue to happen to black men too regularly. Uh, George, George Floyd is just one of many uh, black men who've lost their lives, lost their lives to uh, the injustices that we see around us each and every day. Uh, and the fact that it's happened multiple times over the course of the last two or three weeks in terms of the images we've been shown uh, just shows you that we have a long ways to go to true healing uh, as a nation. And so as a black man, um, it, it, it certainly pains me to, to continue to see this happening in, in our country. Um, it hurts because I recognize that that could be my brother, it could be me, it could be any one of my uncles, and um, it shouldn't be that way in this country. It's 2020. It's 2020, and yet this is still happening. And so last night, like in other cities across this country, we saw a lot of individuals express their frustration, express that pain. And as a country, we've always expressed that pain through uh, exercising our First Amendment rights. And there were individuals who showed up to protest, and I understand where they're coming from about that pain and feel that pain and that hurt. Now in this city, we experience more demonstrations, more protests than any other locality in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And we welcome folks to come and peacefully protest and peacefully demonstrate. However, what I, what I was taught as a young man, still follows me today, is that two wrongs do not make a right. Two wrongs do not make a right. The injustice that occurred to George Floyd and others, that is wrong. The destruction of property, the damage to property, that is wrong as well. Two injustices don't make a right. That doesn't create justice. I stand with Dr. Newbill and a number of leaders across this city and across this, this state ready and willing to break down the systems that create these injustices. And that means working together.